Welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovic. Today we're going to take a second. We're going to talk a little bit about some pressure washers for you. I know a lot of you guys uh, like to do this yourself and you're going to do some cleaning on your house and that kind of thing. We're going to talk about these units for a minute, give you a little bit of tips. Like I said, a lot of you know that I started a business uh, earlier this year and I've been rocking it with uh, pressure washing, soft washing, that kind of stuff. And we're going to take a second. I'm going to show you a little bit of the differences and some things you probably didn't know about your pressure washer. So now... <clears throat> as we get into it we have uh two basically two different units here Commer this is a uh a residential version or a consumer version um these are great machines they are sort of what we consider disposable meaning they do have a shorter shelf life on them um but they work fantastic for many many years i've been using these and they work incredible this is a home depot ryobi one but it does have the honda motor which is the key this is also a honda motor on here too this is a, a gcv 160 and that one is a GX390, but they're both Hondas. I love the Honda motors on all these things, on everything. Um, Honda makes incredible motors. Now, a um, couple things to note. Again, here we are talking about a uh, 28... 100 psi 2.3 gallon per minute machine um that is direct drive meaning that the pump is right here on the bottom i will put so the pump direct drives right into the pump right there so again something simple where this one is completely separate units that's the pump right there there's the motor this one is actually belt driven has three belts in there that actually run this one so my pump only spins at half the speed of my motor and it's just i got idle control i got a lot of different features on this obviously being a pro grade machine <clears throat> so there's some things to think about but now as far as what should you look for if you're buying one what do you need um i'll put some links to some good ones for you consumer versions that i'll put down below for you but realistically the psi means nothing okay that 2800 psi this one's 4000 psi the psi means absolutely nothing it's irrelevant it doesn't really matter what does matter is the gallons per minute okay this is a 2.3 gallon per minute machine this is a four gallon per minute machine and my next one will be an eight gallon per minute machine um there's a lot of advantages to that but that's where the power comes from as far as the, the water flow the capabilities uh the rinsing capabilities which is the most important part so having uh you know more gallons per minute is good but <clears throat> excuse me keep in mind that uh you know if you live on a if you're living in a house in the woods and you're on a well you want to make sure that your output from your well can match that so for example this is a four gallon per minute machine that means that it's going to feed it needs to be fed four gallons per minute, basically, okay? So if your house is not supplying that, you may not be able to do that. I run into houses here all the time that cannot run this pump. Um, I cannot run that. It'll stop. It'll roll, roll, and it'll just never give me water pressure. So I have to actually go to this tank right here. And I bring that tank with me on those houses and I feed it and I actually pull from this and it's a buffer tank that gives me, so even though they might only be putting out three gallons per minute, I can get my four out of this and this keeps filling as I keep drawing. So uh, it's got, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things going on here, um, but it gives you that option. I got inside here, there's a Hudson float valve in here so that this doesn't overflow. A lot of different things to that, but it is an option. But so the easy way to test that before you buy one is to make sure you have enough water pressure is to go over to your spigot that you have on the side of your house, put a five, grab your hose, put a five gallon bucket there and fill that bucket and time how long it takes you. If it, if it fills a five gallon bucket in a minute, then you're getting five gallons per water. If it fills, uh, you know, four gallons or three gallons in a minute, you're getting four or three gallons per minute. So it's real simple to figure out, but that will let you know what you can and can't get away with for your house. Now, when you buy one, it's also important to understand that the tips matter per machine. I cannot take the tips off of this machine here. These tips that you see right here, all these different, uh, you know, tips, which I'll talk to you about those in a second. But I cannot take these and put them on this machine because this is a 2.3 gallon per minute. That's a 4 gallon per minute. The orifice, the hole size in these is different in design for this machine for that 2.3 gallons per minute this one the ones on here you see right here are bigger in design for a four gallon per minute now if you look at this here let me move this one out of the way real quick um but like i said this is a fantastic little machine we'll talk more about it in a minute back to the tips if you look at it you're going to have basically a little bit of variety here and this shows it pretty well your chem tip 
is a 65, usually a 65, but this is going to spray soft water. There's not a lot of pressure there, but it's used for chemicals, okay? If you were to use a downstream injector on this uh, or a soap tank, okay, like that soap tank right down there, you see that black one right there, that tank, the only way to get chemical to be pulled out of that and shot through your wand is to actually use the chemical draw tip. These will not pull any soap out of there. The only way to get soap to come out is to use the chem tip, okay? And it basically works on the Venturi system and vacuum, and it draws from there, but it needs the right tip on there. Now, mine does not have a soap tank, but I do have. I don't ever use because I use a, a chem pump, but um, this would be a downstream injector. So I would take this, and I could put this right in line right here at my output, so I could stick this right in here and put that in there and then take this uh, fill this end of the hose and stick it right in a five gallon bucket and draw my soap through there if I wanted to just like that tank is but in order to draw from there you have to be using the chem tip now if you look at these they show you the patterns on here too so a zero degree has a very tight very pencil stream very point uh, tip and then the 15 degree you can see it fans out a little more 25 fans out even wider and a 40 fans out even wider than that so it gives you an idea what these tips are and they're all color coded the same on every machine but again you want to pay attention to the orifice size and make sure you're getting it now how do you figure that out let's look at it okay so if you take a tip and you're wondering on here you see these numbers right there see how it says 15040 Right there, hang on, I'm going to make sure if I get it to focus, 15040. That that means is that is a 15 degree nozzle and a four gallon per minute machine, the 40, four gallon per minute. So there'll be a number on each one of them that will tell you this will be a 25040. Okay, so this one here will be wherever it is on there. Right there, it's going to be a 25040, meaning that this is a 25 degree spray nozzle on a four gallon per minute machine. So that's, you want to make sure, you don't want to just go to Home Depot and buy a set of these or Amazon. You want to make sure you get them that match the machine that you have, okay? That is very important that you do that. Now, there are other tips. Well, we're talking about tips that you can use. Uh, some of them good, some not so much. This right here can go on the end of your wand like this, and then you can use that like that on the end of a wand for getting in and put a tip. You take your one of those tips we showed you, put it in the end, and you can use this for gutters. Okay, this thing here, no offense, but it is a joke. Uh, used it twice, and I'm telling you, it just makes more of a mess than anything you've ever seen, and I'm not a fan of it. I'd rather climb up there on a ladder and use my hands uh, or use my other tools. I've made my own tools for cleaning gutters, like this thing right here. You can see this long pole that extends out, and I made my own gutter tool out of this was just a squeegee setup. This held a squeegee and it's held a brush. Got it at Home Depot or something and I ground it down to fit gutters and made it perfect and it works great. But um, like I said, they do make that attachment. That's one I do not recommend. That little U-shaped one, I'm not a fan. These are extension wands right here. You can get these. I have them in five different lengths, but you can take this and put it right into the end of your gun right here like this. And stick these right in and make that wand longer. Hold on, I'm going to show you here. But uh, So that would fit right in there. Tips are rolling all over. There we go. But give you an example here of that. You know, you can put an extension on there, such as that kind of thing, if you want to reach higher, or that kind of stuff. And, you know, the, I have them in, I have them in uh, the two foot or three foot. I got a, um, a four foot, six foot, and eight foot extension on there. So then you can just plug them right in. Very easy to do. Now, uh, your guns, okay, I have two different sizes. This one actually appears in my kind of my dedicated rinse gun. I use it for more than anything. Uh, it's got a special rinse tip nozzle on there. It's called an M5. I love this nozzle, um, but this one here, you can see that it's easily adjustable. Right there is a pencil stream like almost a zero comes out real, you know, but lower pressure. And then as I tighten this, you can see that tighten up and it turns it into a fan stream uh, for plant protection and, and that kind of stuff. So I love that setup right there. Um, these are two turbo tips. Uh, these are pro grade turbo tips. You can get them in a uh, um, lesser, you know, and get them for those machines as well too. Um, but turbo tips have a, they have a ceramic, listen, you can hear it and see it, but there's a ceramic tip in there uh, that basically what this does is a, a turbo nozzle is a number one or a number zero, sorry, is a, uh, it's this, it's a zero pencil stream design, but what it does is it spins 
like this inside of there. That's offset inside that ball. So when you spray it, it spins and cleans in a circle like this. And it works fantastic for concrete. Um, do not use it. I'm going to say this very carefully. Do not use a turbo tip or a zero nozzle under any circumstances on wood or any soft materials. You will burn right through it. You will cut through it. You will etch it. You will grind into it. Don't use it on siding. Don't use it on anything. Basically, a turbo nozzle is designed for concrete only. Maybe some industrial application stuff, but for the most part, for a homeowner, do not. The only thing you need a turbo nozzle for is cleaning concrete. Other than that, forget about it. Um, uh, so that kind of gives you some ideas on nozzles. But uh, like I said, the tips are cheap. But you want to make sure that you're getting them to match your machine. Now, speaking of turbo nozzles for concrete, and those do a fantastic job, another option, mine is a little, again, more industrial, but that is a surface cleaner right here, okay? This surface cleaner that you see in here, you can get these for like 100 bucks. that will go on this machine. But again, you need to match them to, they don't really care too much about your PSI, a little bit, but they care about your gallons per minute, Okay. Now, you want to match that, and there are charts for every one that you're going to buy that will let you make sure that you get the right unit that has the right tips and stuff inside of this. Because underneath of this, uh, I don't know if I can swing it out. I got it pretty locked in here. Hang on, let me see. Um, hang on here. Let's take a look. Maybe I can get an under view here. Hang on. I'm going to put you wider. Um, so underneath here... You can see those bars, there's two tips, one tip on each end of that bar, and it spins around. Okay, those nozzles will clean your concrete. This thing just spins real fast and cleans the concrete for you. Um, but again, you need to match it so that it works right uh, for your setup on there. So that's one of the key things that you need to do is make sure that you are matching the all of your components match your machine okay anything that has nozzles and it's going to come out on the end you need to make sure it matches your machine there's just no no two ways about it but it's not complicated to do now as far as that stuff goes this one here quarter inch line this one runs three eighths you can see i got uh 200 foot of three eighths that's my pressure line right there i run a ball valve on mine again because that way i can uh i don't have to turn my machine off to switch between my turbo nozzle you know gun between my wand or my pressure washer or a surface cleaner i can just simply kill the water disconnect it plug into that surface cleaner, run the surface cleaner, disconnect. I can use this to rinse with, with that ball valve and clean the concrete off. And then if I need to, I can connect the wand right into there. I don't have to, all I got to do is keep opening and closing the ball valve to stop the water. I don't got to kill the machine. So that's why I run it that way for how I'm setting up on there. Um, may not be that big of a deal for you guys. Uh, for you know for homeowner type stuff but um, the thing to remember is you do not want to run a pressure washer without the trigger being pulled and being used it so if you are not literally on this trigger boom fire and spraying water out of there when you let go of that trigger your machine is starting to overheat okay it's quickly starting to overheat and it's not going to take long so you do not want to start your machine and not or you don't want to let off this trigger like this where it's not shooting anything and leave it sit there and let that motor idle and let it go uh, because that pump is getting really hot that's actually this device that i have on here because i do a lot of uh lake houses that have got buildings that you cannot get that close to with a trailer or you're going they're so far apart from each other that it's easy it's too hard for me to run uh, I would have to run 350 to 400 feet of hose here, 200 feet of hose here, plus my chem line hose that I run on my other rig I'd have to run all these hoses and it's exhausting so I make my machine portable that's why it's mounted on wheels and i can pull this out and i can use less hose and it's, it's a lot easier for me to just drag this thing wherever i need it and like i said if i need a buffer tank i have a buffer tank right there that's on that cart and i can pull it right along with me too but for my area and where i live without subdivisions and dealing with the way houses are set up here it's easier for me now okay this is a bypass same thing as what's going to happen there if you leave that run it's going to give you fit because you're going to hurt that pump by letting that go. Well, the pro grade machines and maybe yours has got what's called a bypass loop. It'll be a black hose here, comes out of the unloader, comes over, and it goes right into that fitting right there. And it's 12 inches long. So when you let off the trigger of the gun 
what's happening is all the water here is just making a continuous loop right here, just like that through that black hose. And again, you're only talking 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, you're going to start to really heat your pump up and hurt stuff. So what I did instead is I actually have it here. I plugged my return line and I have it here. And then I actually just wrapped all this hose because I may use this for a, when I set up my next trailer, I may have it where I can plug in or unplug. So if I need this unit portable, or if I need this unit to be mounted, leave it mounted, I can. But right now, I have all that hose, and then I got a T-fitting on here. So when I let off my trigger gun, water starts squirting out of here and out of here. So both sides, water trickles out of both sides, but it constantly keeps cold water going through there. So that way, I can actually run this machine. I can let off the trigger and leave it sit there idle, unlimited. I can leave it for an hour if I want to, and it won't hurt nothing, because the pump is circulating fresh cold water all the time and spitting out the other stuff but with these it's a good idea to not run your pressure washer for longer than a few minutes if you are stopping lights let's say that you uh need to go in to go to the bathroom turn your machine off if you got to go answer a phone call turn it off don't leave this thing sitting there idle if you got to go move stuff off the deck so you can clean it turn this thing off it's better for you than letting it run all right now as far as what to use for what and things of that nature, tip-wise on here, we were talking about. So basically, in a nutshell here, what you're looking at, the zero is good for concrete, okay? That's basically the only time. Actually, a lot of people throw this right out, um, you know, because you have a zero on your turbo nozzle over there if you buy a turbo nozzle. Um, and you can get those pretty cheap, and they last for a while. The quality, th these, you know, these are over, you know, they're 100 bucks, 150 bucks, but they, um, you know, they're just built for more pro use, so they last longer. But consumer ones, $30, they're not expensive, and they do the same kind of thing. They just won't last as long, but they're fantastic. So I've never... I don't ever use this nozzle. Um, the 15 is good for a lot of things too. If you want to be able to clean concrete and a little wider, works pretty well. 25 is probably what you're going to use mostly on your deck and siding and things like that, 25 or a 40. Um, but just watch this one, okay? Red is danger. This one here is the one it will screw some stuff up really bad. You will gr you will rip paint off. You will etch things. You could carve your name in a wood deck with this um, if you're not paying attention. And then your chem one, now you can use this to spray chemical you can also use this as a rinse all right um see so there's a misconception on pressure washing that the smartest thing to do is to come in here with a wand you know and put on a uh put on a tip and then come in here like this let me set this here so you come in here hit your gun and start and power washing taking it row by row and just press you know hardcore pressure up and down and that's the worst thing you can do okay you're going to shove water under the siding you're going to get all kinds of stuff in there let the chemicals do the work for you so use your again i use a whole separate chem rig over there with 12 volt system but use your soap tank that you have down here in the bottom Put in your soap nozzle, that blue one right there, and then come to your house and hit there and then spread that soap all over. Whatever one you're choosing, Home Depot or whatever it is that you're using, but spread that soap all over. Do one side at a time. Soak the whole thing down. Soap it up real good. Then switch out your nozzle from that one to like your 45 or your 25 as a rinse nozzle, or if you've ran through all your soap, which is good if you did, um, but you run through all your soap, then you can come back and rinse with that same nozzle. You can still use that nozzle as long as that tank is empty it'll still rinse. If that is, if there's soap in that tank down there, it's going to draw the soap out. So run the soap out, spray it a whole side, get it done, and then uh, then use the same thing. Use that as a rinse nozzle. It's like a garden hose and does a fantastic job. That's what this whole gun that I have right here is, is a rinse gun. Um, so it works really good. So, But basically, you put the chems on the, on the house, let it dwell five, seven minutes, whatever says on the instructions you're doing, and then rinse it. Uh, and if you're going to use pressure, like I said, then I would go with something probably in the 25 or the 45 and stand back a little bit so you're uh, not really doing any damage or anything like that to it. So that basically is pressure washers and kind of gives you a feel for them. Like I said, you know, these things are incredible. I think this, I think I paid 299 bucks for this thing like five years ago, and uh, it's been a great pressure washer. It has done this house... I don't know, six, seven, eight times. It's done my neighbor's house over there four times. It's, it's done a lot of work. It's a fantastic unit for the money. So, um, and I know a lot of pros too that are running these rigs, but on certain jobs, they're taking these too as well. I've already had, before I built that buffer tank, 
right there. I had two jobs that I did that I went to hook this up for and it would just, it would dog. Even though I got throttle control on that and I can tone it down, I still could get not get enough water pressure out of their house. So having this one handy, I could pull it right out of the trailer and run and do the job I needed with this. So don't be afraid. The PSI doesn't mean nothing. The gallons per minute just means it's going to take you a little bit longer if it's a lower number. It's not complicated. Um, but there's, you know, these are some of the things you want to think about on a pressure washer. And you're also going to want to make sure that uh, you change oil in them regularly, maintain them, take care of them. Um, you know, it, it's, it's part of the game that you have to do. That's why I just pulled this one out. I got to change the oil again for the second time already on, on this one here. But, um, you know, they're, they're sweet, simple, they're functional, they're easy. You can buy different wands and attachments, but again, you need to know if you're running quarter inch holes, you want to buy quarter inch holes. They usually come with 25 feet. I think that's 25 feet. Having another 50 foot is not a bad idea. You can connect them right together. A lot of the consumer ones come with just, you know, where you're going to screw them in, uh, or you can actually fit them with quick release connects here, like that kind of thing right there. So you can, you know, just pop your, your, hoses in and out i mean it just there's a lot of options out there for you uh just like i said take your time pay attention when you're looking to buy i don't think there's one brand better than another in a consumer version i do like the honda motors a whole lot um but again they're all basically the same they are somewhat kind of disposable and i don't mean that in a bad way it's just they're not gonna last they're not up to the tasks of being used every single day they're they're gonna work fantastic and you'll get a lot of years out of them but just understand they're, they're not on that kind of a level on there but you're talking big difference too you're talking you know three hundred dollars first you know eighteen hundred dollars there's a huge difference between uh these kind of machines and that one there again you have to maintain a lot of things differently and you have to understand things differently but pressure washing is a fun thing to do it will let you keep all your stuff clean houses concretes all that stuff and like i said even your your surface cleaner like i showed you here in the garage or in a, in a trailer but that surface cleaner that's hanging right there you can buy those for like a hundred bucks that will work with that machine and they actually connect right on the end of your wand so you can take this wand and have a surface cleaner on the end of this and just push it back and forth and work it that way and it actually does a pretty good job so um you know there's there's a lot of options out there for you don't be afraid to track them out, see what's out there, um, and uh, find some stuff. But hopefully this gives you a few tips, a few pointers, save you from buying the wrong things, running the wrong tips with your machine, breaking things, overheating them. That was the whole goal, was to you know, let you know that they're not just plug and play. Okay, They are when they come out of the box. But when you got to replace parts and things like that, you better know what you're doing. Are you going to add accessories? You got to know what you're doing and you got to read the charts for the gallon per minute machine you have, ETC. So uh, there you go. Hopefully uh, that answers some questions for you. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said, kind of weird, not something I would normally do on this channel. Um, but I know a lot of you guys do use a pressure washer and I thought you might get some uh, benefit out of some of these tips. So thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.